What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. This episode's going to be a little bit different because I've already opened up the envelopes. And um, the reason I did that was because I was waiting on trying to get three of these back at once to share them all with you. And what I'm referring to is these are non-sport related returns. Uh, as you guys know, occasionally on this channel, I do jump out of the realm of sports and get a few autographs through the mail. But I want to share with you some very unique autographs and technically they're U.S. military, <laughs> but um, you know, with Veterans Day coming up here pretty soon, I thought I'd share these with you. Um, and all of these gentlemen, I believe, served in the military before they had their careers in their next profession. And what that profession is, is NASA astronauts. So the first one I want to share with you is former NASA astronaut Jack Lausma. And it is a one-of-one -one success. Uh, with the astronauts, uh, in some cases I didn't have more than one card to send, but uh, collecting astronaut autographs is a little bit different ball game. In other words, many of the retired astronauts uh, make a living off of selling their autographs, and you're lucky enough to get one thing signed by them you know, sending multiple items is sometimes something that's very frowned upon in the astronaut collecting world. So I stuck with, um, I stuck, you know, one card of each person in the envelope with protective index cards, and this is what I received. So Jack Lausma, let's talk a little bit about him. Um, I'm going to say this before I start talking about these individuals. I, in any way, am not an expert on astronaut signatures. Um, I know very little about NASA and I know very little about space missions. So if there's somebody watching this that has a lot more knowledge on these subjects, I apologize in advance if I say something wrong or I, you know, it is not my intention to misguide my audience with what I'm about to share with you. So I just want to throw that disclaimer out there that unlike baseball, football, basketball, I know about that stuff because A, I played all of those sports. I can, you know, remember collecting the trading cards and watching, you know, on television the, you know, the athletes. But with astronauts, I really don't know much about it other than I have a couple cards of them. So, Jack Lausma. Uh, Jack Lausma is a retired United States Marine Corps officer before he became a uh, astronaut. He also served in the Navy as an aviator. Uh, he also ran for office at one point in his career, but that was post NASA career. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about their bi biographies, you know, talk about their backgrounds and try to talk a little bit about their, you know, their experiences in space. Um, Lausma received his Bachelor of Science in Aeronautical Engineering from the University of Michigan in 1959. Uh, ironically, <laughs> I didn't know this, uh, this is a sports success. He played backup quarterback on the Michigan Wolverines until an elbow injury ended his college football playing career. I did not know that. He earned a Master of Science degree in Aeronautical Engineering from the United States Naval Prost Graduate School in 1965. He served in the Marine Corps in 59, gaining his aviator wings, and spent time, uh, 7,000 hours of flight time, in general aviation. Lausma was one of the 19 astronauts selected by NASA in April 1966. He served as a member of the astronaut support crews for Apollo 9, Apollo 10, and the Apollo 13 missions. Uh, he, he may have also been selected as the lunar pilot for Apollo 20, which was canceled. So there was 
another mission that was canceled that he was most likely going to be the pilot of. It says that he logged a total of over 1,619 hours in space. Uh, Lausma also spent 11 hours on two spacewalks outside the Skylab space station, which means that uh, that is not flying, but that's, you know, working on, you know, outside of, you know, the, the, the ship while it's orbiting, you know, in space. So, you know, I, I, again, there are so many things about him that are here. I mean, he has so many lists of accomplishments and everything else. You know, he obviously is in the International Space Hall of Fame. He's in the United States Astronaut Hall of Fame. He's up, he has an honorary doctorate from the University of Michigan. You know, there are so many awards and credentials about Lazma here that I could go on for, you know, a half an hour just talking about him, but I want to give due justice to all the other astronauts that I'm going to share with you. So, thank you, Mr. Lazma, very much for signing for me, and we will move on to the next great astronaut leader. All right, so this next one is also a uh, older gentleman. Uh, meaning that he's an older astronaut. And this is a one-of-one one success from Edward Gibson, or Ed Gibson for short. Um, Edward Gibson uh, also was a Skylab mission uh, person. Uh, he, it says on his Wikipedia page that he spent 15 hours and 22 minutes doing extravehicular activity which is defined as being outside of the spaceship you know working on things he served on the support crew of apollo 12 he was part a pilot aboard skylab 4 uh graduated from high school in new york attended the university of rochester received his engineering degree from the california institute of technology caltech and a phd from caltech as well uh, says in total Gibson has logged more than 4,300 hours flying time, 2,270 hours in jet aircraft. So his NASA career, Gibson was selected as a scientist astronaut by NASA in 1965, so around the, you know a year before Lausma. I mentioned that he was on Apollo 12, he was on Skylab 4, which was the last Skylab. Uh, after his NASA career, he started a consulting firm. He does a lot of personal appearances, or at least he used to. I don't know. He, he is 82 years old now, so I don't know if he does appearances like he used to. But uh, it says he's performed a sig significant amount of speaking and writing, has published you know, books on solar physics, edited many books, you know, made media appearances. He was on the... HBO miniseries from the Earth to the Moon. He was portrayed by an actor. He wasn't on there, but he was portrayed as somebody on that. So, about one of the missions that he served on. So, thank you again, Mr. Gibson, for signing. Again, I apologize if I'm underappreciating your career, but it is not intentional, you know, for any of these guys. I just honestly don't know much about space and astronauts. So, thank you, Mr. Gibson. Now this final success um, is from former astronaut Frederick or Fred Gregory on one card. However, as I mentioned, I put protective index cards in there and he signed both of the index cards for me. So this is technically a three success from Frederick Gregory and or Fred Gregory, we'll call him for short, and very cool to get three astronaut autographs in those success. And again, like I said, I was only expecting the one. I um, normally, as many of you know, I send multiple cards, you know, like the baseball players, I send three or four cards, and I put them in a team set bag. Well, anytime that I send just one card, I don't want to waste a team set bag on just a card, so I stick a couple, you know, index cards in the envelope just to protect the card. And sometimes the person signs them, sometimes they don't. Not a big deal. Well, in this case, Mr. Gregory signed them both. So, Frederick Gregory, let's talk about him. Well, 
Uh, Frederick Gregory is also a veteran. He joined the United States Air Force and retired as a colonel. He was an engineer in the military. He was also a test pilot, and obviously he was a NASA astronaut, as well post-NASA career as an astronaut. He served as the deputy director or deputy administrator of NASA. So he was a um, director after his career as well. So uh, Gregory was selected as an astronaut in 1978. STS-51B, which is also called Space Lab 3, launched from Kennedy Space Center in 1985. So he was a 1980s late 70s astronaut. He also was on STS-33 from Kennedy Space Center that launched in 1989. So after his NASA career, and again I'm not I'm not trying to downplay his NASA career as an astronaut in any way, he uh, became an executive for NASA where he served as deputy administrator through the mid 90s. So very cool, very neat that these three individuals recognize the fact that they have fans uh, the only reason that I chose to write these gentlemen is literally because I have their cards that's kind of my philosophy as many of you know uh, I collect you know cards mainly for autographs you know other people enjoy collecting signed baseballs or signed bats or you know eight by tens or whatever but my main forte, or wheelhouse, I should say, is collecting cards. So anytime that I get a card um, of anybody, whether it's sports-related or non-sports-related, whether it's a celebrity, an astronaut, or whatever, it's like, well, maybe I can get it signed. So after doing my research, I started trying to find addresses of these astronauts, and um, I'm just going to put them all on the screen here while I talk. And as I was doing the research, I found uh, roughly six to eight astronauts that I was interested in writing that I had seen had signed in the past. You know, and sometimes signing habits are very difficult to gauge because some of the successes were, you know, four, five, six years old. You know, people were getting them back when these cards were first out, you know, um, you know, five or six years ago. Let me check real quick here. Yeah, in 2012, these cards came out. So some of the successes that I found were people getting these cards signed in 2013, 2014, whatever. So I'm like, well, those addresses still might be good. They still might sign. And so I stuck six to eight in the mail. And I want to say six. But um, if you remember, I had the uh, veterans cards that I had on here, the uh, Tuskegee Airmen and such that I shared with you, and I'll post that video at the end here if you'd like to watch that, but um, I sent out about eight total between the the veterans and the astronauts. Well, with the astronauts, I want to say I sent out six or so, and I only received these three back, so I had about a 50% return rate on my astronauts. Um, with that being said, two of the astronauts did return my cards. However, they returned them to me unsigned. Uh, one individual um, had a pre-printed letter that he said, you know, I don't sign free autographs. If you want my autograph, you know, get me in an appearance or whatever. Uh, the second one, I just simply got back in the bill with nothing, no exclamation, no nothing saying, hey, I don't sign. So, don't know what really happened with that one. Uh, I want to say I have one or two more astronaut requests out there, but because time has passed so much, we're probably talking six to eight months, I'm not feeling too confident on getting those back. So, these are probably the only three astronaut returns you might see for a long time on my channel. Unless by some happenstance I happen to come across one in a speaking engagement in the future, I probably won't be sending too many more TTM requests out to astronauts. So, again, I want to thank Mr. Lausma, Mr. Gregory, 
And of course, you know, Mr. Gibson for all signing one card apiece for me. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Gregory for going above and beyond and signing the two index cards as well. Um, I can tell you that I got these successes in 2019. I can't guarantee that these guys will sign for you. You know, I wrote a handwritten letter, told them that, you know, space exploration was something that I was interested in learning about. And by collecting these cards, I've expanded my knowledge of NASA and space. And with that handwritten letter, I feel yielded my results with these three. Uh, the other three that I have out there, I guess that didn't work. So uh, if you want to track these cards down, they are relatively cheap. Um, you can find them for under 50 cents probably if you look hard enough. But definitely worth looking these gentlemen up if you want to consider sending your own through the mail request to them. Thanks again for joining me for another Through the Mail Thursday video. I know this is a little bit different than my regular sports episodes, but I promise you next week we'll be right back into the sports like I always am. Thanks for watching. Look forward to your comments below.